So what does a breaker block do? So here we can see price is pushing to the downside and we then start to create a internal structural high, a push down, and then we then break the recent swing high. But as we have broken past this recent swing high, we can then see price has retraced and it has met this price level over here to the left. Now to a degree, a breaker block does behave quite similarly to a support and resistance level. But there's a little bit more logic going on here as to why it is reacting to a certain price level and not just an imaginary line running straight through a price chart. So what's going on here? So if you think within this leg here, we would have a buy before the sell. Now the orders that are left behind here is the buying pressure before the sell. As price comes back up to this area, the institutions are then closing any remaining short positions they had around here and then piling up more orders along this area here to facilitate the rest of their long move. So we tend to see a breaker somewhere around either near a reversal or some kind of liquidity sweep. Now on the flip side of this, we can see a very similar situation except in a bearish direction. So we can see the bullish price action here. We have the sell pressure before the impulsive buy. We've swept our liquidity. We've taken a run for these highs. We've then had a pullback, broken straight through, collected more orders around here. The long positions have now been mitigated and more shorts have then been added to the institutional order flow. So let's break down a little bit more detail as to what is going on with these highs and lows. Now, just like anything within the markets, we do need liquidity to fuel a move. So imagine we still have this bullish momentum to the upside here. We're just looking at this leg here. We've got this high. We then had a pullback. We then had a higher high formed. Now, what's happening is when we have higher highs being formed, we likely have buy stops. Now, it doesn't mean every single buy stop in the market is going to be swept as liquidity because Buy stops are very useful, just like how limit orders are and market executions. So this is not saying buy stops or sell stops are not a good idea. But what we're looking at happening here is if traders are looking to get into the markets after this high here is being broken, we're likely going to be targeting traders with buy stops or even breakout traders, traders that are looking for price to break out of here, come back, retest this high and before they continue long. So we've got two types of traders in this scenario that can end up getting trapped into the markets. Now, once this liquidity has been grabbed, Price would then aggressively push to the downside. And typically what we tend to see is this push up is usually a very quick movement and the push back to the opposite direction is usually very similar to the push to the upside. And we'll have a look at an example of this later on. As you can see, when we've had price pushing aggressively to the downside, we've then come back up. We have then tapped into this price level here. So over to the left, this is where our breaker block would be. And we'll be looking for either the breaker block inside here, or we'll be looking for a area of imbalance that price will be attracted towards before we then see the further push to the downside. Now on the flip side of this, a bullish breaker block is exactly the same except in reverse. So we've got a bearish push down, we didn't have a pullback, we've then had a run on the sell stops and the breakout traders in this area. We've then had a very aggressive push back to the upside. We didn't see some imbalance left behind around this area and our breaker block. So we're looking at the buy candles here before the impulsive sell. And this is where our breaker block is going to be. We'll see price come back here, retest this level and then push further to the upside. So let's have a look at an example of a breaker block on the charts. Now, typically what we can see is this kind of pattern. All right, so we can see at the top here, we've had a sweep of a recent high. Uh, it was an aggressive sweep, like so. And we can then see we've also had a break of structure to the downside. And this is also, um, this pattern here that we've got is also a shift in market structure or a chalk, whichever label you want to place onto this. Right, so the key thing to look out for here when you're looking for a breaker block is the aggressive push to the upside, sweeping the liquidity. And then we also want a strong push to the downside. Now, the push back down is obviously not as strong as the push up, but the stronger the push back to the other side, the greater chance that the breaker block will be working. So where exactly would we be looking at for the breaker block? So what I'll be looking at is this last sell candle before the impulsive buy. So we can mark out this candle just here, like so. And now we can see what's going on. We have our sell candle before the impulsive buy, 
Price has then pushed straight through it. It hasn't really given us any reaction at all. We've had a little bit of a wick going on here, but there was no reaction, no buying pressure to the upside. So this is a good indication when this breaker block is in the process of forming, that there's not much of a reaction or if any reaction to the upside and price has just broken straight through. So let's now have a look at this bearish leg. As you can see, all of these candles from here down to here are just bearish candles. Like we've got a few indecision candles here, like this one here and this one here. Okay, but every single candle is a bearish candle. So you can see that the momentum of the bearish volume is relatively strong. So where can we anticipate price coming back up towards? Now we do have a little bit of imbalance around here. It's not a strong amount of imbalance, but it's still there nonetheless. And we're not looking to be pip point accurate with the breaker block. Now what we can potentially see if or when price comes up to this is maybe a tap into it, push up, maybe clear into some of this imbalance here, and then a further push to the downside. So let's have a look to see what price action looks like in the build up to the breaker block mitigation. So here we can see we've had a mitigation of the breaker block and we have come up and rebalanced this imbalance here. Now we could argue that it has come up to mitigate this, but this isn't necessarily a very clean POI. So far it does look like we are mitigating the imbalance. And now from here we can see prices now pushing back to the downside. Like so. So there we have a nice simple view of what a breaker block looks like. Right, so let's have a look at this example. What we can see going on is we've got a low here, we've then got higher lows being formed, we've got higher highs, we've got a higher high and a higher high. So with the anticipation of expected higher highs, we can see this area is potentially going to be a liquidity zone. So any traders with their buy stops around this area are likely going to be taken out and swept. So we can see price has pushed in, it would have, it would have activated these buy stops and anyone looking to trade the retest of this price level has also then been triggered and also liquidated as price is pushed to the downside. So let's have a look at our last sell candle before the impulsive push up. We can see in this area that we do have this area as our breaker block price pushing straight through this breaker block with very, very little reaction. And this is usually a good indicator that this is going to be a breaker block is if we get very little reaction. Now, typically what we do see quite often with normal POIs, like let's say, for example, we've got a demand zone just here. All right. And if this is an area that's going to be respected or disrespected, doesn't really matter which is going to happen. Often we do get some kind of push away from the POI before we either ultimately fail or continue pushing to the upside. OK, so we tend to get some kind of reaction either way. Now, with a breaker block, what this is showing us is the very strong push up and the very strong push down. The orders that were in this sell candle have not been mitigated. They've been added to. So where we have this strong momentum pushing to the downside, we can see that there's likely going to be more sell orders from somewhere around this region. So let's advance price forward. Let's have a look to see how this occurs. As you can see, a nice mitigation from this breaker block and a further push to the downside. And a good target in this type of situation will be somewhere around these structural lows. Now, just like any POI that we use when within our trading, we need to make sure that we are on the same side as the market as the momentum. So if we're looking for long trades from a POI, we need to make sure it's pro trend. Likewise with this, now the good feature of a breaker block is if we are looking for a shift in market structure, quite often we tend to have a shift in market structure naturally occur with a breaker block. So just like any other POI, we still need to have our checklist. We still need to see our confluences aligned with the trade narrative. So hopefully this has given you a good insight as to how breaker blocks work. If you guys have any questions or any thoughts at all that you want to clarify with regards to breaker blocks, then don't hesitate to reach out.